Yeah, there is so many things special about Shopify other than developer, developer community, which is amazing, the tooling, the product itself is really good. I'm not going to talk about it because that would take me <laughs> hours to do. Why, why I love it is it's driven by entrepreneurship. It's really important. Content wins and it's so powerful. Like me, for me, probably start with tweets. You, it's blog posts. And I it was a really, really one of a time experience. Like there is so many things that I would just loved about that call because it wasn't uh, only with Tubi. It was actually like you have the president of Shopify as well, Harley, and you also have like the whole Shopify because it's uh, an internal call where they basically talked, uh, where we basically actually spoke with uh, all Shopify, all Shopify folk, all Shopify staff, staff from the inside and they watched it. And how did I get the call? I think, uh, like, uh, Toby actually DM'd me on Twitter. Uh, he reached out to me. He said, hi, I, I've been following you for a while, and I love what you do. Do you mind? We have this fireside chat, and this time, this edition is actually focused on the community. And do you mind if you join? And I was like, yeah, I, I wasn't actually, like, at the first, I wasn't expecting to be like an official thing. I actually thought that it was like an, an official, like where you just go in, in like talk to the founder, etc. just express like, and get the idea of how close like uh, the developer community is with the, the higher ups at Shopify, which is really, really cool, which is one of the reasons I love Shopify. You can easily access like people uh, at the top and that is really good. But I wasn't prepared. They sent me questions and I just went ahead and, <laughs> and talked to them. And I really loved it. It was really spontaneous. Hi, welcome guys. Welcome to this special edition video where I will interview Younes, an active member in the Shopify developer community known also as Blank Lob. He is also a Shopify developer and a freelancer currently. So let's pass the mic to Younes and give us a quick introduction about himself. Yeah, first, before I start with the quick introduction, uh, like, because so many people ask me, what does Plunk Love really mean? Does it mean, like, does it have a meaning? Because it's a yeah. it's a really cool name, but does it mean, like, really doesn't mean anything. Like, I just went and searched for, well, Plunk Love. And, like, I think the idea we had behind it was, you know, liquid blank. I think that's probably yes. this game, but <laughs> but yeah. Uh, so yeah, quick introduction. Um, Younes, like uh, EKA Plan Club, uh, been building on Shopify. I'm currently a, a technical consultant for some of the biggest brands on, on Shopify. Started as a dev, as a front end dev. Uh, currently based in Paris, France, and yeah. I build on Shopify every day, and I'm happy to do so for the, the next 100 years. I guess, <laughs> yeah. That's really cool. The last thing that you mentioned that you would like to build for Shopify for the next hundred years, I would like to know what is special about Shopify that you would like to be building for the, your whole life. So, what is special about Shopify? Is it like a yeah. developer community, the company itself? Yeah, there is like I can talk about this for a, <laughs> for just one hour, just this whole uh, thing. Uh, yeah, there is so many things special about Shopify other than the developer community, which is amazing, the tooling, the product itself is really good. I'm not going to talk about it because that would take me <laughs> hours to do. Uh, but I think Shopify, why I love it is it's driven by entrepreneurship. It's really important, why? Because if you wanna build a platform, you, you don't have to think of it like just a SaaS. You really need to believe it. And I've been in contact with so many people who work on, on Shopify and they're really passionate about what they do every day. And that is really important. The founder and like the whole story behind Shopify and the president himself is also an entrepreneur. He owns a company. Same with uh, like uh, all the people at like the higher ups as well. I uh, would just give you a simple example. Ben, working on the hydrogen team, uh, is an entrepreneur. He owns two brands. Uh, one is called Cotton for Cotton. You know Cotton. It's a, it's a, yeah. it's a like a fashion brand, and he also owns Margin. So this just shows you that these people actually do this because they love it because it really matters. And the developer community is awesome. Like 
amazing. The tooling is really, really good. Allows you like to build really cool stuff. So many things. And I think Leaf provides the future is because there's so many things. And one of them is that it moves really fast. Uh, it's a shop of, it's a, a platform that ships product updates so fast and so like in a steady way and it's moving really quickly and you you do not see this like they do 100 editions uh, futures every uh two times uh, a year one for summer one for winter and that is really cool you see they move at the speed of startups and you don't see big enterprise do that it, because it's so risky and they ship product updates, developer updates as well, which gives developers even more opportunities to build on the platform. And also like other things such as it really keeps you, like myself, for example, my experience with Shopify is that it really keeps me from evolving. Like every time Shopify released something, I have to learn it, I have to adapt, and that increases my standards. So Shopify increasing their standards means Myself, I increased my standard. Like when I started with Shopify, it was just like a year yep. ago when I talked. Like I just started working with small entrepreneurs, and now I I, I already touched enterprise brands that I work with right now. Just to, to give you a, an idea, like Shopify moves is always ahead of you. You chase it, you move forward with it. That is basically why I think it's the future and why I I believe in it. Yeah, I totally agree with you because I also been a Shopify developer freelancer and I also am currently still a Shopify partner developer in my free time while working my full time job as a founded engineer in this startup. And I think I share similar thing with you about why we love Shopify as a developer. And also I have been using Shopify also as a merchant. So it's have like a similar experience for me. And this will lead us to another question. How did you get started in Shopify? Is it like the first time you get started as a merchant, then switch as a developer? Is it the other way around? How was it? When I started with Shopify, it wasn't really me who made the decision to get started with Shopify. It was because, like, like I said, I'm from Morocco, and in just after the COVID uh, hit in well in the world, I came to France. Uh, and then COVID hit. So, and uh, originally, like, I started studying because I studied physics, like science, uh, math and physics in Morocco. I got my, okay. my degree and then moved to France to continue yeah. physics. Uh, uh, like, I think it's a bachelor degree. Uh, yeah. And it was at, at the time of COVID when it just hit. So we, we, st we say that, like, instead of going to university, we just stayed in school, uh, in story, <laughs> not in school, in <laughs> our houses. And, and then in at hope, this... Yeah time is where i we got a project where we need to actually go and do it like um inside laboratories but in, because of covid we had to do it in our houses uh in form of a, like compute like computational how to say this like by programming instead of actually uh, going to the labs uh, so it's like experimentation physics but using computers using code basically so i started le learning like c++ at the time we did it and i started like getting into programming this is where the first time i actually like programmed something and i really loved it imagine like i had my pc and i was just like coding all day for seven for 17 hours straight and i loved it and i said you know what i'm going to quit physics and do programming and next year i joined this i think this it's a school about like uh, programming like uh, how to learn web dev etc and like started there learned like the basics python uh, and then javascript and then web technologies like javascript html and css and then after that like we had to find an internship uh so that way we can like get into the pro world uh and when i like the, my first internship was in this agency it's french uh, where they do Shopify. They're basically a Shopify agency, and that is exactly where I met Shopify for the first time. And they introduced me to the platform. They explained to me like the basics, and learned from there. Stayed with them. Worked on really some really cool uh, French brands out there, and then uh, uh, moved on to start freelancing. So I think like I didn't exactly make the choice where 
uh, I go, I, I did go to the internet and then I found Shopify by myself or something. And then I said, well, I need to check the dogs. But it, like the choice wasn't made by me. It was made by, well, the, the agency that I joined, which is uh, like great opportunity. And there is where I discovered Shopify and started playing with it. And I said, well, this is really cool because it's a, it's a beginner friendly. Like I just came out of an internship and understood Shopify easily, uh, even as a developer. So yeah, this is how I think I discovered Shopify. That's great. It's like a, you have to, to learn Shopify. And also Shopify is very beginner friendly, especially the Shopify team development. You can easily learn it. Just you need, like, as you know, HTML, CSS, a bit of JavaScript. And Liquid is one of the easiest templates in language to be able to learn. It's easy to learn. And also I would like to know, you are currently a consultant slash freelancer. How you get your first freelance client as a Shopify developer? How was the experience? It was hard. Like a, we already know, like a, getting the first client, it's always the hardest thing. Uh, how was your experience? I think I think I'm a. I would say I'm a bit of a, an exception regarding that question because like I got the client in a non-conventional way. I would say like it's not like something that you would apply or there is a formula. Uh, like my first client, but basically I was just tweeting about Shopify uh, on Twitter and saying, well, this is it. This is well. I just share my knowledge. I would say, and like an agency owner uh, saw my tweets. He followed me. And one day he, he DM'd me on Twitter and he told me, well, you know what? I got this client and it's a French brand. And do you have the capability of taking, uh, like, or working with them? And I told him, hi, uh, like, I don't, I have no freelance business in France. How can I do that? Is it possible to do that in there, like, you? Uh, and he told me, no, like, he, like there is some issues with, uh, like he has a bigger team, etc., and he sent me the client, and I talked with the client for the first time. I was so nervous because they were like my first freelance client, and after that, we like I told the guys, I know Shopify, I know how to like code, I know Liquid, I know basic team dev, and um, like. The, they like the idea. They want to, to like to learn more, and I told them, guys, uh, the issue right now is that I would really love to work with you, and it's also a Shopify Plus client, which is like I said, it's a, it's a, it's a, a bit bizarre because like you usually start with small entrepreneurs, while me, I just like yeah. went <laughs> Shopify Plus from the beginning. They told me, well, you know what, Yunus, we can help you start your own business, and we can help you with that, and you can work like as a freelancer for us. And I was amazed because they're entrepreneurs. They helped other entrepreneurs to help them, <laughs> which is really cool. Um, so yeah, that's how I started. They helped me started l l to start my first freelance business, like legally. And once that is done, I start working with them, uh, worked with them for uh, approximately six months. And then they started recruiting because they're like I said, bigger. They got bigger and they started recruiting their internal uh, team. Uh, and then, well, uh, I moved on because they have like capacity internally and I, I'm always in touch with them and I moved and from there, like start working with other brands. That's good. I think we share a similar thing because also my story beginning with the Shopify as a freelancer, I used to, uh, like my first article I wrote, it was like related to Shopify and I wrote it on Medium and it's got like a mini read and one of my first Shopify client, I got it from this article and many of them, like I think my, my, like my first 20 Shopify client, I got it from this article and also mostly from personal blogging is like, I think a good way to be able to get your first client as a, as a freelancer is to build a personal brand, like a true, you have like a different channel. For example, you are tweeting about Shopify. I used to write article about Shopify. You can do like a podcast, YouTube video. Like I did it like a mini different channel for content creation or content creation to be able to build a personal brand. So you can prove to the market that you are capable of building Shopify store or wherever like a niche you are currently in. So you can get your first client as a freelancer. And 
why are you talking about this thing? I would like to get more about what are the challenges that you face during your career as a Shopify developer. Uh, like just to add to your first question, like w when you talked about like blog posting, just to uh, like I I know it about you just from those articles. So it's really like just shows that content wins and it's so powerful. Like me, for me, probably start with tweets. You, it's blog posts and like details like blog posts I've, I've learned so much from them and uh, like i said we, we talked about even one of your blog posts when you talked about how to enable pwas with, within shopify teams which is really cool uh content i think is probably the most sustainable one it just takes time it's hard to do but it really pays off long term uh, this is like uh, validated by so many uh, so yeah, I think, like you said, content is a big win. Uh, at, like Shopify challenges, there is always challenges, <laughs> uh, and this is this is why uh, one of the th like one of the things I love about Shopify is there is always challenge. Uh, like my first client that I talked to you about is a C two C inside Shopify. You don't see that every day. Like C two C. Uh, you usually see D2C, which is Shopify main uh, value proposition. Like they are built to support D2C by default. Uh, but C2C will actually uh, customers sell to other customers, kind of like uh, kind of like Amazon uh, in some sort. Uh, it's a it's a like it's really challenging. Like my first client, where I had to learn so many things, especially because when I started with Shopify, was actually a front end dev and then forced like to learn app dev which made me a full stack dev at some point like when like i made mistakes one of them is if a client asks me do you know how to do this every time i see yes <laughs> and because i said yes i had to do it and i had to learn stuff along the way like obviously there is so many times where i worked weekend where i worked like nice nights but you always learn, and you, that is what makes you enable me to, later to to become good and like to raise prices. And now working with so many enterprise brands as well, uh, like there are so many challenges. But I think Shopify moving forward, like is making it easy for developers to start. Like when Shopify got started, developing the developer platform, like the tooling is really hard to work with. I would just give you an example with Shopify. We used to have Team K which is really, really <laughs> bad. Now we have Shopify CLI, which is just one tool. You can use it to build headless. You can use it to build uh, apps. You can use it to build teams, which is really cool. Uh, back in the days, we didn't have that. <laughs> like there is so many different tools that you have to learn. The docs got better as well. Uh, even interactive right now, if you check liquid docs, yep. you can really play with it. Uh, back in the days, that wasn't possible. I think Shopify is removing so many challenges, but you have at some point five face yep, these for challenges sure. to yep. improve. And also, I like uh, talking about like uh, the like uh, the improvement for the Shopify platform as a developer. I remember like uh, when I start Shopify team development, there's like um there's there's a, like a one tool that was not main, well maintained, which was like a Shopify slate. If you remember that. It was like a before uh, the Shopify section everywhere, like at the, the, and it was like a very hard to work with, yeah, and yeah. it wasn't like a well maintained by the Shopify team. But I think over, I think in the last two or three years, like uh, the Shopify team, like a uh, push very hard the developer experience, like uh, from the Shopify team, the Shopify headless build, and also the Shopify app development. Talking about Shopify app development, I I saw you are currently building a like a AI Shopify app to help. It's like I think with the Shopify app extension, uh, I think Shopify team extension. You would like to get more about this project if you would like. Yeah. Uh, so basically, uh, like me and my friend, one day we 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 just said uh, like we he had some free time and I told him. Yo, uh, do you want to play with AI a bit? And we we started just building like an AI demo for for inside the team, and we actually like, and he told me, Yo, this is really good. Why not ship this as an app? And 
this is where the idea got started. Just like we just took something that we just built inside the team with just like basic team development tools and improved it to be uh, an app ready, ready product uh, within like weeks. It wasn't like we built the whole thing in, in seven days. Uh, which just shows you that you can ship really things really fast. And after that, like we, we tested it on some some demo stores. We made a simple launch. We tested it on some demo stores where uh, like some clients like really loved the idea, some didn't, which is like good feedback. Uh, some really want like some complex uh, futures especially for the admin and most of them did that because like most brands that reach to us are not really early stage they're like uh, bigger brands and after that like I talked with my friend if we were going to work on this full time uh, because it's a, a product that is moving fast and we had like to really be available for it and what we did, we we uh, we like we had so much freelance work, and we couldn't like uh, keep up with with like uh, futures that are requested by actually people who tried the product, and that would take us so much time. Uh, so what we did, we I basically passed the product to uh, to others to actually build it. Now it's 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 used by a, another company. Uh, it, it really shows you like. One of the challenges, because like it's a challenge, is you will reach a point where I think you have to make a decision where you either do freelance or do app development. And app development is really, really pays off because you build something once and others reuse it. It's like you build, you code once and you just ship it and you maintain it. There is no like, like. Uh, code every time uh, like you would do in, in, in a freelance where you have to build similar futures for different brands, which might be, I would say, uh, uh, like uh, a little bit boring. But if you ship apps to the app store, it should really, I think it will be really rewarding. But you have, like, I had this challenge where I had to make this decision and it was hard. And by now in the future, I'm going to like, uh, right now I'm starting to do consulting and this will really give me more time to actually build, uh, uh more public apps for the app store. Makes sense. Yeah. That's great. I, I one of the things that you mentioned during like, uh, the, like uh, the question that is, what are currently the challenges that you face during your Shopify development career? It's uh, like a keeping up with the update from Shopify. How you do that? Because there's a lot of update, like uh, two times per year, we have like a hundred of update. How you can keep up with the, all of this update and also managing your, like, uh, your work as a freelancer? Uh, you're totally right. Like that is a really, really good question because not only developers suffer actually from that, <laughs> but also brands who are on, on Shopify, like they have to really cap, keep uh, up to date with Shopify, especially brands that are, or, or that are on headless. Like if you have your front end outside Shopify and you want to keep up with Shopify updates, that is really hard. And now we actually became uh, an advantage where for brands to actually go from headless to native just because Shopify is moving so fast. Uh, so yeah, like what, how I do to keep up with Shopify updates. Um, it's so important that I actually made, like I have a Discord community and I actually made like a bot uh, and that is available on my uh, Discord who basically tells me every time Shopify updates the change log, basically uh, sends me a message on both Twitter and Discord to just keep up. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, I think uh, you have, it's an advantage because you keep learning stuff uh, and it's also a value proposition because you can actually take these uh, new updates and create value for them for uh, potential clients. Like I would just give you a simple example. Let's say a really good example that just simple one that I remember generate me, uh, generated me a, a lead uh, is when Shopify Translate and Adapt app released the ability to have translated handles. Like if you go to a product page in English or in US market, let's say you have read bag and you now can, do, can actually translate the handle 
uh, inside Shopify, which was really important for ECO to like uh, rouge, uh, voila. <laughs> and this is really important. And what I did is I basically just made a post about it. And so many brands actually contacted me that how they just want to make great from sh from other platforms like Magento to Shopify just because of this, because this is really like important for ECO and for like brands who want to go global. Like you take something that is released and you, you, you make a lead from it. That is something that I applied and generated me so many leads multiple times. Um, but I think like it's a good, it's a, a good thing because you learn every time. And it's also another good thing because you just take these updates and make uh, a way to generate lead from them. Uh, so if you want to go, if you obviously want to learn and want to move fast, I think Shopify is really good for that. Yep. No, I totally agree with you. One of the things that you mentioned is uh, like uh, keeping up with headless. And I would like to know more about your opinion about Headless, especially like I remember the time when Headless was a bit like a trendy. There's a lot of clients that just want to migrate to Headless and they don't know like there is a technical depth that, it, that that's come with Headless. I don't know like if small like a Shopify store can handle this because you will lose a lot of feature just from moving to Headless. And you like are thinking that you will have like a, an advantage and sometimes it will be like a disadvantage for you other competitor Shopify store. What do you think about this headless approach? Yeah, uh, like if I'm going to speak about headless, like if you don't know what headless is just before uh, I explain the difference between the two, you have headless and you have Shopify native. Shopify native is where you actually have your team, your whole front end, uh, which is your team, your like, uh, like your store basically, that is uh, uh, the front face uh, of your brand or actually your customers buy products is inside Shopify. And if you, if you, this is the native approach, which means you host everything in one platform, which is in this case, in our case, it's Shopify. The headless approach is a different way of having your store built. Uh, in a way, you use Shopify as a backend, uh, like to manage orders, products, etc., and you use like uh, another platform as a front end, where you actually use some kind of a, a front end framework, and this can be even done with vanilla JavaScript. Uh, where your front end is actually outside Shopify. This has many advantages and has also disadvantages. <laughs> and so it's opinionated where you, when you should go headless, when you should not. Uh, there are cases where headless it makes sense. And there are cases, and I've seen those cases, and there are cases where headless doesn't make sense at all. Uh, it just like, uh, I will give you as an example where headless uh, makes sense. Headless is great for composability not performance. This is one of like the most important things. Uh, most agencies sell headless projects saying that, well, if you go headless, it's a really uh, performance. You will get a performance website really fast, like Lighthouse courses, ex scores, etc. Yeah. And this is not actually where headless value is. It's actually composability, where you basically take your front end, you can build your front end on top of different platforms. I will give you an example. You can use Shopify for D2C, and Shopify is a killer D2C machine, and you can use a different platform for B2B or C2C, for example. And this is really powerful. And these three platforms will have their whole front end from one stack, and that is really good. Uh, and also, uh, Headless is also the same technology that I used to build like native mobile apps outside using like uh, uh, mobile builders or app that uh, lets you build mobile apps. But it's the same approach where you actually have your front end inside a mobile app, but you have your back end at Shopify. Hey, this makes sense if yeah. you uh, like have multi-platform, if you want to do stuff that Shopify cannot do, a C2C is an example. Um, and if you like have so much server-side code, that is executing elsewhere, like an automation platform like Make or, or, or others, or you have so many backend platform that is built on top of Shopify backend, and you, Shopify is just limited in terms of, like, uh, of this functionality. I think Headless makes sense there, but most of the cases, especially in D2C, Headless doesn't make sense, and, uh, and Shopify is really moving fast, and if you are on Headless, 
you have to build every future you want for your front end. I will give you just an example. Let's say you want to create subscriptions. Yeah. You want to add subscriptions. You're basically selling products. You want to add subscriptions. If you want to do this inside Shopify and you have a native front end inside Shopify, you can do this in two minutes. If you want to do it inside a headless build, you have to call the developer and the developer will take weeks to just build this. Even if they use like uh, an API such as Recharge or other platforms, they have to build the front end for everything. And this is not only the use case. There is other use cases where headless like really uh, is hard to like manage. Uh, you have to pay for the front end, which means other like you have to pay other stuff. Like it's a different platform. And especially like if you on times like Beast, Black Friday and Cyber Monday, like your whole front end is hosted on a different platform and you basically not use the Shopify advantage, which is um, Shopify is unbreakable. It's like the front end. I've never like I've been building on Shopify for for years now. I've never noticed some a customer who told me my store is down on Shopify. And that is really crazy because like it's never down, it's unbreakable. Most of the time we see the admin in breakable and that's just a huge advantage. And you don't want, and if you go headless, you basically not profit from this. And another thing is you have like different platforms to manage your front end. Your content is going to be on a different platform, a headless CMS probably. And if you go native, your whole thing is in just one platform, which makes your team's velocity really increases because like you just have one admin to manage the front end, the data, everything. It's, it's a really powerful. Uh, like headless, like I said, has its use cases, but for my, most D2C, they don't realize uh, like most D2C are on head, that are on headless don't actually realize that it's really bad for their business until they actually know the advantages of going native. And I've seen so many use cases. And currently, basically, I'm working on a, a headless migration, by the way. And brands don't know, uh, like, have these performance benefits, uh, which is slight. Like, statistically, really doesn't matter, especially at scale, um, over so many things. Like, you lose uh, flexibility, you lose scalability as well, and you lose an ecosystem of yep. so many apps that you can just plug in, install, and use instantly. And that is really powerful in my opinion. And I think Shopify is moving fast. And if you are on headless, you're going to struggle with that. If you are on native, you're basically on the same boat as Shopify. You don't have, like, being on the headless is like being on a simple, like, boat, while Shopify has this big, like, uh, boat where, like, it moves just fast. You, you have, like, to move fast with it, and that is like requires so much resources. If you are on native, you just move with Shopify. Yeah, for sure. And also, one of the things that you need to keep in mind when you are moving to headless from the Shopify native experience, you need to have a, like a dedicated team for Shopify headless development because you need to keep updating and keep maintaining the project. It's not like a one-time shot. So if you just like migrated, you will have some some feature that you would like to add that was in a Shopify app that you cannot use in a headless build. And also one of the disadvantages that you mentioned for headless is uh, you will not have access to the Shopify app ecosystem, which is a bad thing. And maybe like a disadvantage if your competitor, like a Shopify store, have like a native experience, they may have some better feature that that you can just like a plug in one minute and just like um, improve the, the Shopify store experience. And you need to build it yourself and test it. And there is a lot of things that you need to do to be able to deploy it. And it will have like a disadvantage. And one of the things that I hope for Shopify headless build it's to ability to have access to Shopify app I think I saw a couple of uh, Shopify app will have uh, not, uh, API access to the Shop to the Shopify app that you can use in your headless build, but not of all of them. Just like a couple of them that will have do will have that, because for example, I remember me, like uh, trying to migrate a Shopify headless, but most of the app doesn't have an API access, and most of the alternative app is not what the customer is looking for. So we have to build some feature on our own, which will take a lot of time 
and a lot of effort to be able to build it and maintain it and it's not cost effective for the client and i think when you are thinking as a shopify store owner to migrate to headless you need to take twice before do that because there is a lot of technical doubts that will come up with this approach uh, and i think it's not a it's not like a easy decision because there's a lot of used to have like a lot of hype around headless because of performance gain like you will have like a all degree lighthouse score but it doesn't matter at the end because what is matter is like a, the sales as a shopify store owner it's not the performance you need to have to find a good balance between performance and result and go like at the metric that you would like to achieve uh, moving to the next question i would like to know what are the most unique and complex products that you build on Shopify? I have built, uh, I think, a couple of them, but I would like to get to know more about your product that you built. Yeah, uh, like, just to add to that headless, like, conversation, like, headless, like I said the other day, uh, is built for developers, and native Shopify is built for entrepreneurs, and this is really important because Headless needs, you need developers if you want to go headless. And you always rely on developers, actually. And native, you don't have to. So you can actually, uh, like, build your own futures easily. Um, so regarding, like, most complex projects, one of them is headless. <laughs> uh, it's a headless brand. Uh, it's on Shopify. And, like, in this use case, to be honest, they not even don't need to be on a headless build. Uh, uh, but yeah, one of the most complex products was a Next.js project where they used Next.js to, to uh, like, to for the headless on fronts, uh, and they have like many integrations with different platforms as well. And it's a company that sells. Uh, it's a subscription-based product as well, which we have a quiz, we have like subscription, which that we had to build, and. And yeah, like this is one of the complex ones. Another complex one is actually my first project, like the C2C marketplace. It's a brand called Barouders, and they're based in, in, in Paris, uh, where they like they basically we built a C2C inside Shopify. Like we we uh, actually customers create products inside the, their Shopify, which is really uh, crazy. Like and we built this in house. Uh, it's not a custom app. We built this we basically built a custom API uh, that we shipped to the cloud and this API basically handles form submissions and other C2C automations as well, uh, such as product tagging, because we also have to build a customer portal uh, for people actually to manage like the, because customers order from other customers. So there is a, uh, you need a different dashboard for customers actually to manage orders from other customers, because otherwise like you get, you yourself, uh, you get the orders in Shai Shopify, but you need others to be able to do so as well. And also to get paid, because imagine if someone orders a product and they need to get paid. So we need to make an integration with Stripe. Sounds good. I think it just uh, give like a re remember of my complex products I built on top of Shopify. I think one of them was a travel booking platform inside of Shopify store. It was native uh, to Shopify. So I was managing to be able to build an API connection with the travel booking platform that the Shopify store owner have a partnership with. So I need to build the UI to be able to let the customer in this platform to book and pay using the Shopify payment system their booking it was a bit tricky to do i was using mostly like a draft order with a custom product to be able to do that so i can have like a dynamic pricing for that and also one of the other thing that was complex that was really hard a shopify store owner that have an air table where they manage multiple shopify store and each shopify store had different projects and each project had a different variant and each variant image need to be generated dynamically. So I need to create a Shopify store for each one, generate products for each one, and each product variant will be dynamic. So it was a lot of thing to do. Well, so a lot of API and a lot of uh, image generation and stuff. It was a bit complex and uh, and uh, I think that was one of the most complex projects that I ever built in Shopify. 
So welcome back, guys. So you can tell that we have a different background. So let's continue this podcast. So one of the questions that I would like to ask you, Younes, is how did you get the call with the Tobias? How was the experience having a call with the founder of Shopify? Like, it was a really, really one of a time experience. Like there is so many things that I would just loved about that call because it wasn't uh, only with Tubi. It was actually like you have the president of Shopify as well, Harley, and you also have like the whole Shopify because it's uh, an internal call where they basically talked, uh, or basically actually spoke with uh, all Shopify or Shopify folk or Shopify staff, staff from the inside and they watched it. And how did I get the call? I think uh, like uh, Toby actually DM'd me on Twitter. Uh, he reached out to me. He said, hi, I, I've been following you for a while and I love what you do. Do you mind? We have this fireside chat. And this time, this edition is actually focused on the community. And do you mind if you join? And I was like, yeah, I, I wasn't actually like, at the first, I wasn't expecting to be like an official thing. I actually thought that it was like an, an official, like where you just go in, in like talk to the founder, etc. just express like, and get the idea of how close like, uh, the developer community is with the, the higher apps at Shopify, which is really, really cool, which is one of the reasons I love Shopify. You can easily access like people uh, at the top and that is really good. But I wasn't prepared. They sent me questions and I just went ahead and, <laughs> and talked to them and I really loved it. It was really spontaneous and we talked about uh, like why you build on Shopify because th there wasn't only me there is a uh, there is Kogali which is a friend of mine and there is another partner from Canada who has uh, an app uh, inside the app store uh, called design packs and we basically like asked questions what do you love about Shopify why you build on Shopify every day how did you get started same questions you you actually asked me but to express this in front of the founders is really like yeah. like it, it's like like I'm a kid in front of them. Um, to be speaking is a really like different, uh, like how to say this. It really like when he speaks, you you can really feel wis wisdom in his words. Like he's really he's he's a really wise, uh, especially from a technical like aspect because he's the CTO of Shopify for for over a decade. And also, like from business, etc. But yeah, like it was really, really good experience, and I would definitely love to do it again. Um, and thanks to Shopify for inviting me. Uh, that is like really cool. That's really good. Thank you for answering this question. One of the last questions that I would like to ask you: What's the thing that you would like to recommend for an inspiring developer, like a uh, advice, resources that you would like to have for for someone just getting started that they know like at the basic of web developments, for example, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Yeah, absolutely. This is like one of the most asked questions. Uh, and I've been through all different parts of Shopify dev, from teams, from apps, to even hit lists in some projects as well. And to even like, uh, like, uh, like really custom bag and stuff as well, which is which is really cool. Uh, but all these different areas are really different and might need some degree of expertise. You cannot just get started with hit list. You cannot just go and get started with backend or custom app development for for merchants. That just is uh, a little bit complex. How I got started, like uh, like I said, I started as an intern where I learned like the base, like really learned the base really well. I'm talking about HTML, I'm talking about JavaScript and CSS, learn how to actually use these natively within the web because these are like web native technologies. I wouldn't recommend like starting with like or trying to uh, like find shortcuts. I wouldn't recommend that because uh, like Shopify dev is one of the easiest ways, uh, one of like the most accessible ways to actually start making a living while actually just learning the basic. If you just yep. learn, if you just know HTML and JavaScript, you can already be a freelancer and work for, for, as a team developer or even like get even listed in, 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 the, in their marketplace as well. And 
And yeah, like so many brands at scale even just rely on liquids and liquids is just pure HTML. Uh, uh, and you can literally just get started with the base and move on to um, custom apps and probably headless in the future, uh, like where headless obviously makes sense. Uh, but yeah, move from team development. It is various resources. Uh, I would really recommend. There is some YouTube channels. Your art, your blog is an example as well. Uh, there is also Shopify Docs. There is workshops websites uh, made by Shopify to like uh, for different areas in charge of Shopify functions. Check out extensibility right now, and even headless as well with hydrogen. Yeah, there is different resources. Try to pre like as long as you practice and try to find your like first clients. Would you actually like challenge yourself? I wouldn't recommend like being static because Shopify is moving fast and you have to move fast as well if you want to really like evolve and if you evolve obviously your pricing will evolve and your knowledge as well will evolve and your value so yeah like there is so many ways to to get started but I think like starting steady uh, the right way is the best way to do it yeah for sure yeah I totally agree with you in this point and I think we shared uh, like uh, the comment advice for an inspired Shopify developer. Just get the basic of web development, get into Shopify liquid and learn the Shopify basic. And I think you have what is needed for your first Shopify freelance product. So my last question will be, who would like to have a guest for the next episode in this special? Who is like a coming in your mind when you are thinking about Shopify development? I think a great person to invite next because me, I work as a freelancer. I think I'm a, a person that would really be perfect for probably this upcoming episode is someone who works inside an agency and manages teams. I think that would be really great, like to actually see how uh, like uh, Shopify like agencies work and uh, like from a CTO perspective where they have to manage different developers and different profiles and resources uh, to, to, to basically ship storefronts or like other Shopify projects. And I might have some few folks in my mind, uh, but I think I'll probably send you like a list after the, after, well, after the podcast. But yeah, like I have some few, <laughs> I have some few that are French. And I'm, I'm, I'm not even sure that they're comfortable speaking in English, uh, but I definitely have few. And the best thing is, is that they're not like, uh, like uh, 40 years old or 50. Like these, uh, like the guys I know are like really Gen Z. And you can see that they've, they've like, they create, they are building on Shopify. And that is really, really cool because yep. if Gen Z is building on Shopify or like Young Yacht is building on Shopify, that means that this company is the future because these people will are actually yep. the future and that is really good. Yep, exactly. It's this is the power of the internet. You no know, anyone can build, you just need to have a skill and you can just prove yourself. You can build anything if you would like. Uh, so for people who would like to get more about you and your work, where would you like to recommend them to go? Like your social media handle? If you would like to mention that. If I had to recommend something like, uh, to, if you have like questions, I would really recommend to join my Discord. We are more than like uh, 1200 developers, Shopify mainly developers. There is even like job posts that I share every day uh, because most of the times like there are missions that I don't take on uh, and I share them there if you want to get started. And if you have like questions about Shopify dev, like there is so many people who could really help and I know some really high talented folks out there in the discord so this is this and if you want to keep updated you can follow me on twitter as well like I, I usually I usually talk on twitter even on linkedin as well like at blind club <laughs> and you, you can find me on twitter also I think you I saw that you start a new youtube channel that you post some Shopify tech video would you like to mention that also? I created this collective of developers and I call it Odistry. And the idea is to build like open source packages and tools to help like developers inside Shopify ecosystem like build faster. So this is the org. Uh, 
and there is also the YouTube channel which basically hosts some really like I would say mid to advanced content for for developers there, there is even beginner friendly content as well uh, that you can check but yeah uh, there is audistry you can find it on youtube as well as on git or github as well and i would really recommend checking out those those projects on github because like they might save you some really good amount of time uh, so yeah. yeah that's cool so thank you so much uh, Yunus, for accepting my invitation for my first video interview and I hope you enjoy having a conversation with me and talking about Shopify. So we share like a love for Shopify as a developer, which is really good. So it does make this conversation really smooth and really like a funny and casual. So I hope you love it. Yeah, absolutely. Like my always a pleasure <laughs> to talk about Shopify. Like, <laughs> like, as I said, I hope, like it's something that I can talk about for hours <laughs> because it's something I do every day. But yeah, always a pleasure to talk about Shopify and you as well, uh, Elias, uh, always a pleasure. So that's it guys. So that's it for this episode and see you for the next one.